Hello world. Today in the Great Giza Pyramid we're going to address the subterranean sections and the dead end shaft. The um, shaft that comes in to the subterranean section is I believe 170 some feet long. It's incredibly straight and it comes uh, from the surface. It does actually breach the surface of the structure. It's one of the only two openings that breach the surface. The other one being the uh, southern shaft out of the uh, combustion room. Where the shaft comes in, it meets in thus of a fashion. Now I've accented it. It's only about three inches and this whole thing I believe is, uh, this is like one meter, 39 inches squared, and this is like uh, 43 inches squared. So where they come together and meet, uh, it's got to be a little bit bigger than that because it, it hits at an angle. So, um, well, you know, we can worry, worry about the math later. It's the shape that's the function. Now this hallway is like incredibly long. Um, I believe it's some 20 or 30 feet. It, it is not short. It, it is fairly long. And although I drew it poorly here, I'm going to redraw it really quickly. The bottom of it I do believe to be level up until where it gets into the um, pre-subterranean chamber. And then you have the what they like to refer to as the subterranean chamber. Now, this first six or so feet is incredibly smooth and flat. In fact, this whole section here is actually squared. It, it is nice and squared, and it is smooth along the whole edge. There's a tooth that comes up, and then this other section is about one inch lower and goes completely across this whole area like stucco. It is ripply. It is not smooth. And in fact, when you look at it, if you take a, a picture and do the lighting at a, like right near the surface, you can see that there's little bubbles within the structure so that when I suggest what's going to be happening, you can get a better idea of what and why. The one and only section that is not within a limestone bath is the pit. They, they have to call it the bottomless pit. However, they have dug down and they did find solid ground. So that is, uh, the, the bottomless bit is long since been dismissed. There is a conduit that comes out below the elevation of the floor line of that. The bottom, we don't know if it's smooth or whatever, but um, it is 57, 53, 57 feet long. It is pretty long. The section up here, it, it, it's broken down into pieces. The first section seems to have, what I can tell, and I'm going to almost accent it, but really not, have sections that kind of look like that. They are, they are ribbed, kind of like an inchworm from everything I can see. And until someone get me pictures or go in there, like uh, with one of the little Chris Dunn's squaring tool, and actually get me some ideas of the depth of it and what angle it comes out at. This is the model I'm working with right now. So that would be the first 30, 40 feet. As it gets back here, it starts to, and I'm going to draw this with uh, north, south, what would it be, west, east, okay? As that tunnel goes into the wall, it goes and it curves, and then it has kind of like a, a shape. Let me get this. Now I've accented that a little bit, <laughs> just so that you could see it. But it does definitely curve. In fact, when you look at, uh, I have pictures on photos.giza.ws, but when you look at um, pictures, you can look down into the hallway and you can see this lip right here and then you can see the, the back hallway and then you can see the wall right there. So when you're looking through it, you kind of get that sort of a view. Um, and it, it exactly what and why it's doing that 
that's where I need somebody who understands physics a little bit more to, to aid me. But what is occurring is primarily we have oxygen coming out of this, which would be the anode to the system. There is a rock right here. I do believe it would be acting like a doorknob on a windy day because it does look like there is was the excretion of a gas, I believe it to be hydrogen, from over here. But I think that was a bleeding point because the true vent for the hydrogen is up in the grotto where there's another pit that is exposed to earth. Everything else, this whole, everything else within the structures within the limestone bath. The same elevation as the top of this is the opening that goes up to the grotto, that section up there, so that the water is all connected. It is all in one pool. There is a bubble in the back north corner of this section, and I'd like to see how that bubble aligns with the pit in the king's chamber, the com uh, combustion chamber. Um, not that I think it was transferring the hydrogen from point A to point B, but yet inferring it, because uh, there is communication within this entire structure if you pay attention. There's a big bubble in the roof right there, which shorts to another bubble next to it, which shorts to a bubble that shorts to that protrusion within the room. And that would actually be on the roof. So if I was to, <laughs> I drew it on the wall where it should be on the roof. So one bubble is right here, which bleeds to another bubble, which is at a slightly higher elevation with a little land bridge. So it bubbles over and then bubbles to there. But all that is on the roof and it is a, in a pattern. It actually, it, well, I might as well draw it. If we were to look at that room, top down, that one bubble is about here, 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 and there. So it kind of does the same thing. This area goes down and then has a roof line. Actually, that would be the floor line. Has a, a roof line, if I was to draw it in 3D world, and then circles back up, kind of like a, a little uh, J trap for your gases and your plumbing. Only this is done because I, I do believe when all is said and done, we're working with multiple densities of water and or other compounds. Within here, we have some what they like to refer to as fins. And you notice the elevation of some of the, the fins there align with the elevations of where the changes are taking place. That's because this is this part is the communication, which if you look at the pictures from the 1800s, this, the fins were covered with rocks. Most of the communication within the structure was covered with dirt and rocks to protect it so that the function of the machine didn't really affect the communication. They left an instruction manual. People can say they didn't, but they clearly did. Even in the Queen's Chamber, the uh, Ark Chamber when we get to it, you'll notice that the bottom of that fin that goes in, or the tail that goes into the wall, it aligns with the deviations wherever there's a, a change in something, you'll notice it's one way or the other. And if you follow all those lines, there is communication that relates to other pieces within the structure. All the communication is relational, it's visual, only that area within the, the uh, niche of the Queen's Chamber was covered in dirt. So you didn't, it was there, but you didn't know it. And it wasn't part of the function, it was part of the communication. And you can see that uh, almost scattered throughout the structure, but we'll get into the, the, that point in a bit. But the, the fins on this side, the, the difference in the elevations of the fins marry the difference in the elevations of this. And that's part of telling you, showing you what's going on. Within the fins that as, as they're sitting here, yeah. There are knobs um, to set the timing down that hallway. So you can see the different stages as it comes along. And I believe those are in tune with 
what is occurring here because that oxygen which will be coming into the room saturating the room will be bubbling out of the room into this room as they bubble into this room the elevation of this is slightly lower than the elevation of this so the gases are going to bubble back into this room in fact I do think the two gases may even at some point pull the waters below the roof line not 100% sure but it is possible if not below it right at it they may maybe like perfectly marry it that would be where is to get those details somebody with a nice laser scanner can just walk their way through that room and get all the information also like somebody to walk through there with like a Rilo or a GoPro and get me either a 360 image or even just a regular image but you know stopping every couple of feet and panning back and forth would be helpful because there's a lot of information that can be read off the structure anyway these two gases at play working in this whole area will allow, if I blow it up, for the hydrogen to take root in the top areas and as they come out will bleed over to the other area, bleed over to this area while the oxygen continues to expel but give the hydrogen a path back through the system so that as much hydrogen is maintained as possible. Um, it is you know, it, it's, it will have more than it would if it was just smooth. So something is better than nothing. Again, a force multiplier. But um, I think that hydrogen is what comes to play in this room and how it's actually reacting. Now one thing, this pit isn't nice and round. It's actually quite squared. And in fact, just like the niche that goes into the wall of the Queen's Chamber, this has steps on it as well and it changes at certain points now when you marry those points with other things in the room like you notice that one of the corners lines up just perfectly with one of the fins and one of the other corners lines up just perfectly with one of the other fins this is how you relate the information you can tell the depth of that change to what it's re relating to and then that probably or that, not probably, it does, will relate to either another piece or will marry the other side and relate to another piece because they're, they're showing you what's going on visually. So anywhere where it's nice and squared like that. You notice part of that was also filled in, although that I think just the, the contact with Earth is really what they were looking for to get the water within this pool at one voltage potential and the water up at the that at a different voltage potential and then as the waters play amongst themselves you get all your reactions of nature and hence the separation of the gases into its two respective or the separation of the compound water into its two respective gases H2 O. Anyway this is what constantly runs the system. This would be at the voltage potential of ground and this would be at the voltage potential of something else. Um, as long as it's different and as long as it's more than 1.23 degrees, 1.23 volts different, then you have the separation of water into its two respective gases. Now, I was saying that I think they're playing with multiple densities of water. As time and time and time and time goes, eventually this setup is going to get us uh, heavy water, which will be D2. And the heavy water has some slightly different properties. It uh, takes a little bit more energy to break. It has to hit a different Q state. Um, that will cause this water to break first. So we're gonna be left with an abundance of heavy water as time goes on. I think it is that heavy water, which is what this is designed to siphon off. So as the heavy water elevation rises, that it will get siphoned off as the hydrogen is being sucked out of the water up here or split out of the water up here it will be pulling up a replacement for the displacement of the gas that it is sucking out of the water so um, what else can I say about this subterranean section oh the hole in the back also comes down about yo and there's a break in front of it. 
Now, all, all this is really relevant um, when we get into what and how to read the system. But uh, it has a section that comes out in front. The, this, these whole fins would be much better with, with pictures. I should do that on a, uh, a thing with pictures because I can't draw it justice. But as I understand more about what it relates to, it, it would probably help me to draw it justice. Anyway, so uh, I urge you, uh, again, uh, I have a video GoPro 2015.giza.ws, and there's also uh, Lost One. L O S T the number one dot uh, Giza dot W S will bring you to videos at both the uh, the one the GoPro is at about the thirty six minute mark and the other one the lost one is about the thirty minute mark where I have a video of this conduit so you can put eyes on it yourself and, and see what I'm talking about both for the rippling effect and the uh, conduit itself so. Uh, Let's see what else could I mention about the oh they like to call it many times the unfinished room they call it the unfinished room because they kind of want you to dismiss it oh it's the unfinished room let's just go see the the main main chambers this is far from unfinished I, I think this was completed to perfection um, the way it was done the way the elevations were done oh there's also a divide right about there when you look at it and there's also a divide within the section here. Um, there's a divide right about there. It was actually before the cut, and definitely right there. You can, and I think this one as well. You can see where they, as they were building it, they stopped with their different molds, and they cast a different mold. You can also see on the way up, there's one or two spots where there's like a foot gap, and there's like rocks and stuff shoved in there. Um, that's not a fissure. That is where they when they were pouring the mold, they used something like the channel digger to dig the whole thing down. They wanted to make sure that there was nothing for about 12 feet on any direction. And then they filled it in with what we refer to as limestone, but I'm sure as a casting material, much like cement or a limestone polymer. So um, to create the, the set up, the lab set up, to do this wonderful um, organic experiment of separating water into its respective gases. Now it's what they did with those gases, what the rest of the system is doing, but this is the engine. And uh, there's a gentleman, John Cadman, who talks about a hydraulic water pump. The reason he found the cavitation, or signs of it, is because this flat area will create an primarily oxygen bubble, or we can call it an air bubble, a gas bubble. That gas bubble will take root in the, knit, in the little tooth there, grow across the top, and when it breaches this end here, it's going to blurp out. When it blurps out, the water's going to displace the gas, it's going to come down, and it's going to act like a water hammer. That water hammer you can see evidence of in pictures from the 1800s, where there's like five or six um, at an even pace, piles of dirt. Those piles of dirt show us the frequency and wavelength of that pound. And that, that echoes through the system and echoes down into this section and would echo through here. Now, what and how it's doing in there, I'm not sure. I don't know if that's a perfect setup for cavitation or a perfect setup for a jet. But either way, that is what the water is doing and nature will answer the question of what what it is doing, what, what, that, what that shape uh, yields. Just like honestly if I was to look at a, a flute with the reed sticking in it, just looking at it I couldn't tell you what it's doing. I know if you blow it right it makes noise, but how exactly the wind is causing it to make the noise. Yeah, I, I'm not, not quite there yet. Uh, but I do know that if I blow on it, it makes noise. I do know that when we put water in here and give it, in it a, a, a force, that something is occurring within here, especially with the abundance of hydrogen within this room and the uh, other elements at play, 
this water is actually going to be under pressure. Uh, you're going to have the oxygen bubble up here where it's trying to get out, causing a back pressure and pushing down upon the water. Uh, there's there's going to be lots of little things at play that uh, change the change this from something that is not your normal water in a bucket. The, the environment is slightly skewed. So as long as we understand what the different variables are and how the environment is being skewed, again, nature will dictate what action is occurring. And, uh, you know, for, perhaps we can find a compound that uh, we are unfamiliar with because um, we don't set the right scenario up. Uh, there, there's, there's learning to be known from this structure. I mean, uh, just if we had known 200 years ago that it was separating hydrogen and oxygen, that would have been great because we didn't discover hydrogen until the 1600s and we didn't discover oxygen until the 1700s, right? So this structure obviously was taking utilization of the fact that water has its two elements that it can be broken down into, something that we could have learned from. But uh, anyway, thank you. Have a nice day.